Welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. To be honest, I forgot to include the bit about Super Lube on a recent uh, video uh, review I did about an airbrush, which was actually this guy here. Now, thing is, a lot of people have this misconception it's for metal parts rubbing together and stuff like that. And what I thought I'd show you is a quick breakdown of how I use it and what I'm led to believe is technically the correct thing with it. Super Lube is obviously, it's a water-based product. Yes, sniggers at the back and all the rest of it but it's not just for actually metal or metal parts. It's not like an oil. Technically your airbrush doesn't really need that. It's very few sort of moving parts like that. What is moving all the time though is your needle. Now your needle, as you can see in your airbrush, is actually the full length here. And you've got a couple of things going on here which are gonna affect it. The big one is just about here, we have a very big seal. Now, depending on your airbrush, it'll be different types. This particular one is the CR Plus version of the Infinity, which means it has a triple Teflon seal in here, i.e. there's three of them, okay? The needle has to push right the way through that. So obviously, if the needle is dry, um, obviously if you've got something like a hot product in here, like a lack of thin or something else like that, it will strip uh, all the lubricants off of the needle and it can make the travel and transition period through here quite difficult. Now you might notice if I pull the trigger and let go, it's not exactly brilliant. It, it's there, but it's not what I call snappy. It's nothing wrong with it, it's a clean airbrush, but it's a little bit stiff. Sometimes you will see it and it will just gently slide forward. There's no snappiness really to the trigger or anything else like that. Now I have mine slackened off quite a lot. If I tighten this up, obviously you put more tension on the trigger. There's a tighter spring, you can see it's quite nice. But this is number one priority for it, is making sure that there's actually a nice piece of lubricant right the way around the needle and on those seals, which allows it to flow and slide with ease up and down, which gives you greater control over the needle, okay, which in turn means you have greater control over your paint flow, the pattern you're using, and everything else like that, okay. Second thing, though, to it, though, is it actually coats the tip of the needle as well. This prevents drying of certainly acrylics on the end of your needle, which can cause problems with buildup around the actual part where your needle and the nozzle actually join at the very tip. If it's clean and there's no buildup of paint there, you have a better flow, i.e. you won't get that stop starting, the thing where you have to keep maneuvering, just dancing on the needle just to keep it moving to stop build up and then you obviously keep the flow going. That's the other big thing for it as well. So by putting a little bit of lubricant over the needle every now and again, that'll just stop things from sticking onto it, just pushes past it and all the rest of it. So that's it. So how'd you go about it? Okay, quick disassembly here. Okay, usual thing. You can take the needle out the back and out the front. A good way to know if your needle is being or working nicely is looking here. And we have got a little bit just here. You might see it. If I put my finger under it, you might see this little bit of dirt just there. That is actually just where the um, seal set is actually on my airbrush, okay? There's a little bit of dry paint in there and that's obviously gonna affect the pattern because when you run your finger over it, I can feel it. It's a slight raise to it. It's gotta push past those seals all the time. You don't want that at all, okay? Let alone at the end. Now, to be honest, this is my older airbrush of the two. It's got my older needle in it. It's got a little tiny tear on the end of it, but it's good for things like priming and stuff like that. But generally, as you can see here, the needle is quite dirty. So the first thing we're gonna do is just clean that off. I'll do it the quick way. So we're just gonna take a little drop of lacquer thinners just onto a piece of tissue. And as I say, if I roll it, you can see, you can hear my needle dragging on there. It's a little bit of a needle check. If you've ever wondered if your needle is dragging and you've got a tear, if you hear it, it's hooking, you roll it and it's fine. There's a small little bend on the tip of my needle. Okay, but the big thing is we wanna get rid of that area in the middle. So the needle is now absolutely clean as a whistle okay so now you just wipe it all off then you can take your lube okay you're just going to put a little drop on the needle about not right way to the end because obviously you're not going to need it okay then i pop it on my finger and we're just pulling downwards motions down to the end and we're rolling it right the way over that said needle okay just down there so you've fully coated the needle right the way through Okay, then I'm just getting another finger and I'm just going to wipe around. There's enough left on there to do the business. And that is it. It's completely lubricated. And then the standard way you just come back in and slide it in. And you will notice how when you get to this midsection where this all is, when you took it out, you felt a little bit of resistance. What well, you should feel that this just slides in and out of there, no problem 
whatsoever, okay? So there is no actual resistance in there anymore. And what you've actually done there is lubricate that seal set. So it doesn't matter if it's a rubber O-ring or if it's a Teflon seal, it's just done it absolutely fantastic, okay? The other thing as well, you can do a couple of other little areas on your airbrush. So to be honest, you have your little trigger assembly here. To be honest, the needle flows through the middle of this. This little guy on the ball on the end here, I don't know if I'll be able to get this up in one, or we can, but you might notice you've got the little nipple on the top here. You might just want to put a tiny little bit of lube and it's not going to take much at all. I'd say this is why one of these pots will last you a lifetime. And all you do, dance it up and down on there and it just makes this go through here. As you see, you can, I've got a Teflon seal on here, but it just makes it flow a little bit better. Now remember, this is all water-based. As you can see, it's not silicon and it's non-toxic because it is literally just water-based, so it's not going to harm anything. It's not going to affect your paint in any way. So don't go in there with silicones, certainly not a silicon spray, or oils or three-in-ones because what's going to happen is it's going to mix with your paint and it's going to cause trouble. Technically, these are absolutely fine like that. Okay, so what you can do is just pop that up. Again, you don't need to lubricate any of this part in here, but if you just want to make sure you don't get any wear and tear, I'm sure you won't. You can just put a tiny little bit on the tip there. You pop it in and you should notice it all is fine in there like that. And then what we'll do, we just reseat this rear. That puts in there and you should make sure it's snappy. What I like to do as well is that I've got this little movement area up here is I'll just put a tiny bit of lubricant just in there as well. And you can actually just drag this back and forth. And all you're making sure there's no dry paint. You shouldn't really have any paint up this end, but if you have, you can just pop it in there like that. Okay, so that's all nice and clean. You should find your trigger is nice and snappy. And I've actually put my trigger in back to front there. Okay, run it around all that way. Okay. sits in there and then you'll find your needle should just go in the back and again just gently pushing through and a little tap don't ram it because you're going to push it up too far okay but it should just sit in there just like that okay then we do up the collet at the back of the nut tail section goes on and you should find, you can probably see and hear it, it's a lot more snappy, but also when you're pulling, there is no resistance at any point right the way through, and the needle is instantaneously popping out the end. There is no where the trigger's gone forward and then the needle comes through as the spring released. You can probably see on the top there how that's pushing through instantly, just like that. And that is it, that is the point of lube. I know a lot of people obviously have that misconception that you think it's actually for metal work and it's because of metal grinding together. No, but your airbrush, it doesn't really have that type of thing anyway. It's tiniest little, little rocking motions, if you like, between the top of the air stem down in here and the actual needle up here, the actual uh, depression onto the nipple on the top. But that is literally it. And that's what it's for, really. It's just lubricating that entire needle, making sure it slides, it's free and everything else. And again, it stops build up on the tip. So there we go, super lube in your airbrush. <laughs>